Welcome to today's webinar about digital transformation. Before we start, I would like to thank you for your interest in the topic and for making the time to be present while we strive to tackle the question, how is the work environment changing and why digital transformation is no longer optional. For today's event, we will count with the participation of Abela Guiat, Executive Director and Board Member at Microsoft Portugal, Duarte Flip, Innovation Analyst and Specialist in Digital Transformation, and Miguel Marques, Affinity's Chief Technologies Officer and the person in charge of Keyword Product Development, our own sourcing, talent recruitment and career management software. We've created this event with the premise that digital transformation is no longer just a concept of the future. It is no longer optional. All of you present today are undeniably dealing with the changes brought by the accelerated technological development and the adaptation to a new normal. We are experiencing a technological revolution and it is imperative to look at the challenges and possibilities we face and ensure an efficient articulation between people, processes and technology. And that is exactly what we'll strive to do today. And to do so, I'll start by inviting Abel Aguiar to share his view on how digital transformation impacts people, their tasks, dynamics and productivity. You're most welcome to write down all your questions in the chat box and we'll address them at the end of this webinar during the Q&A session. Welcome, Abel. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation to participate in this webinar. I'll pass the word to you now. Ines, um, let us start the presentation of why digital transformation is No matter what industry you are in, whatever types of customers you serve, your organization is transforming. Today, more than ever, you need to rethink what is possible and become more resilient to a changing world. You need to embrace new ideas, processes, and technologies grounded in a strong sense of purpose to empower each other, our communities, and to the world around us. With security, continuity, and resilience being top of mind, data drives information, Information drives insights, and insights inform decisions and create methods to help you respond, recover, reimagine. New business models, new products, new markets. Retailers are using edge computing to make shopping safer through contactless experiences. Manufacturers are using digital twins to model production and accelerate time to market. It's no longer just about one simple software solution. To reimagine your business, you need to create a connected, efficient, and scalable digital ecosystem. It's time to transform and think about your own future as a digital company. How? Through integrated industry solutions that drive business outcomes, empowering your people with the right technologies and products to achieve more. 
that seamlessly combine leading business intelligence and productivity solutions with the power of intelligent cloud and intelligent edge, where you can build your own digital and technological capabilities with the unique support of the largest partner ecosystem. It's time to take the next steps in your digital transformation journey. Your vision, your data, your customers, your future, today. Microsoft, empowering every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Good morning once again. I'm uh, Bela Guiar and I'm the commercial partner lead for Microsoft Portugal. Let me start by thanking Affinity, a uh, partner, a very important partner of ours, uh, to give us the time to explain to all of you our vision on digital transformation and why it's no longer optional. The video we just saw highlights a couple of important messages that I'll be detailing with you uh, today in this presentation. The events we lived in last year accelerated the transformation of organizations across the globe, no matter what size, industry, or country they were in. It's true that our new reality is pretty much like this. We went from one day working in our offices to the next day uh, working in our homes, and no one was prepared. I worked a lot of years on business continuity plans and no disaster recovery scenarios covered what we had to live in. But it's, it's true that even though it impacted all organizations and despite all the characteristics of the organizations, it's also true that the organizations that were highly transformed or at least more digitally transformed than others were more resilient and were able to cope and face the change and adapt quickly to what we had to live in. And based on that assumption, let's pick on this concept. What actually is resilience? Resilience, according to the dictionary, is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. It's, it's, a, it's a quite basic concept in the way it's built, but it was more used usually in things like networking of telecom. But when you adapt it to a company, and this is pretty much what we had to do from one day to the other and then the last 12 months, which is adapt to a crisis, a significant impact or a disruption in our lives. And when, when we look at technology, technology played the central role in, in, the, in this resilience. And it also will continue to drive that, that, uh, that central role because our world will not become more certain, less ambiguous or less volatile, even if we tackle the pandemic effect. At Microsoft, we look at three different moments. And the way we see it is we have three moments called response recovery and reimagine. Response was the initial stage, March of last year in Portugal. We had to move our, our employees from the office to their homes and continue working. Focus on employee safety, business continuity. This was probably the time where most companies found out that they were highly dependent on physical. It's actually interesting because most of them didn't, didn't grasp how dependent they were on physical buildings, um, physical signatures of, of documents, uh, maintenance and repair of IT assets. All of this were critical to, from one day to the other, become virtual and run. And that was the, the initial stage of response. Then we entered re re recovery stage. Recovery is pretty much where most companies are now. Okay, uh, It's seeing uh, uh, economies opening up, seeing uh, uh, instability in a way decreasing, even though with a lot of uncertainty. Uh, we are reopening now, um, but there are already doubts if we should reopen uh, the second stage on, on Monday, but France just closed. So this is where we stand currently, is trying to open up while still tackling uncertainty. And this, give, is, this takes us to things like safe return of employees to the office, sell, support, and deliver goods in uncertain environments, but while meeting customer expectations, agile logistics, supply chain that rapidly, rapidly adapts, as we see some countries where we have suppliers closing and others opening up. And we have to take this into account to, to continue to work. Data analysis and insights to try to understand first what will happen next week or the months after. And adaptable processes to keep this all running. Automated low value procedures to reduce physical dependency. 
if we automate what we don't have to physically do, it will give us more flexibility to adjust to uncertain conditions. Some countries, some organizations are already looking to the next stage. The next stage is reimagining, is looking at what's ahead and reimagining our business built on digital transformation to make sure we can strive, have success, or in some cases, survive. Because this is what we have in top of mind, is this is the time where your competitive advantage in the future will be built. It's the moment to reinforce resilience and to ensure for future success. It's the moment to become more agile through app modernization, improved decision making, breaking, breaking silos inside your organizations to consolidate data and get those insights that really drive value and find the, the places where you can take, take advantage of the opportunities. Is orchestrating end to end the supply chain to quickly adapt. It's increasing customer satisfaction by customizing sales and services. Companies must embrace this stage now. Even though we are still recovering, we have to reimagine. What studies that we did across the world show is that if you act now, you you'll be 14% faster and will have 50% higher return on investments than if you wait because you risk losing the competitive advantage that you need. But now that we covered resilience and the three stages, let's cover digital transformation. Because even though I think I've been talking about this for the past five years, the truth is it's still not clear to everyone what digital transformation really is. For us in Microsoft, digital tra transformation is business transformation leveraged by technology, driven by technology, but it's business transformation. It's not implementing a new CRM or Office 365 or going from on-prem to the cloud. It's actually generating value to your company, your employees, your customers, and your shareholders by transforming your business. Therefore, ensuring digital transformation requires a clear alignment of vision and strategy, culture, unique potential, capabilities, all of those built in with a strong sense of purpose. Vision and strategy is the cornerstone. When you look at what your, what, how you see your business in three to five years, what's your strategy to get there? And your vision has to be rewritten based on the future we are looking at currently. And that's the cornerstone. But then you need culture, because culture is what your employees do when no one, no one is, is watching. Is making sure that when you are in the gray areas, they know exactly what you do and they are guided by the same values. If you want to digitally transform your business, you have to make sure your culture is aligned. And then you have unique potential. What is actually the things you do that no one does like you? It can be a physical location, an IP, a framework, or it can be your employees, whatever it is, those are, are the assets that you truly have to grasp and retain. And you have to build your digital transformation strategy around them. And then you have capabilities. Capabilities that can be operational, technical, or human. Human is a challenge. We lack in Portugal the necessary human skills to actually drive the digital transformation we need. Our last estimate shows that until 2025, we'll need at least 4,000 professionals, new professionals with digital skills. We've been working uh, with, with the Ministry of Economy on this topic. Uh, we've been working with the Ministry of Higher Education, but it's still not enough. The, the average percentage of IT skilled people in the overall people in Portugal, it's still below West, uh, European average. And if you take that into the number of IT skilled people leaving the universities, again, it's still small. So we have to reskill, we have to import, we have to build the human capabilities we need to drive effective digital transformation, or we have to leverage the partners that we have that do these types of things for us. And it can help every company deliver the value they need. These four dimensions are strongly supported on a deeper sense of purpose. A purpose that has to be itself rethink in digital. Things like sustainability, Things like diversity and inclusion are key for innovation, are key for driving this change that we need. So we have to make this uh, a clear definition of our own company, 
both vision, strategy, culture, unique potential, capabilities, and purpose. I'll give you a couple of numbers. So 63% of people that were consumers um, that were interviewed in a survey done by Accenture say they will stand for companies and the products and services of companies that defend a higher ground, they work for a common good. They will, 70% of them will recommend those products and 62% want companies to really say what they think about these types of issues like sustainability or diversity and inclusion. So all of this has to be built together to make sure your digital transformation is successful because most, most of these aren't. But how do you see digital transformation working? For us, Microsoft, it has to, is not actually, is not actually adding value, exists. These four are then highly increased if you put data and artificial intelligence in. Data and artificial intelligence goes to the initial topic that I mentioned of breaking the silos inside the organization and really get those insights in and use those insights, again, to empower employees, engage customers, transform products, or optimize operations. If you look at, for instance, IDC, IDC is saying that until 2025, at least 90% of corporate applications will have AI functionalities built in, completely re redefining the way we work. Data follows a similar behavior. Forecast for 2025 says that if we stack DVDs with 175 zettabytes of data that we'll have, it will enable you to go 23 times to the moon and back. So this is the importance of data and AI as the glue of the four dimensions. We witnessed all, all of these changes around us in the, in the past 12 months. If you look at Portugal, you saw all types of products and services entering Uber Eats, for instance. Galp was on one of the one of the, um, the companies that took those convenience store items inside Uber Eats, or CTT delivering ID cards to each one of us in our houses, or even entering e-commerce as a part of helping their customers in a differentiated way. Because again, it goes to unique potential, it goes to capability. They have the contact of each one of us and get to our houses so they can deliver it. But they also have the capability of having logistics. So e-commerce comes into, into place. But also you found things like QR codes in every restaurant for you to safely get uh, the menus or factoring adapting their production lines to, pro to produce hand sanitizer or virtual walls, wall of fans or lastly events like this. Virtual events where we can interact with you without the need for physical presence. All of these will go beyond. And on recovery stage, apps to make sure you safely get to your office or uh, queues in, um, in pharmacies for you to pick up things without having physical, physical uh, proximity. All of this will continue to evolve. I want to give a couple of examples. In this case, a very specific example. Because one thing is knowing your path. The, actual, the, the other one is actually understanding the complexity that you face. This is quite important because we are all learning. Keeping a growth mindset will be critical for success because digital transformation will continue. We have to make sure that we are learning as we go along because this is actually accelerating. This was a survey we just published uh, last week. And if you go, uh, I think it's quite interesting if you know, Found, search for the, the link in the bottom or search for hybrid uh, work trends Microsoft and you'll find the study. These are the seven main conclusions of the study. One is flexible work is here to stay. 70% of the workers want flexible remote work options uh, when we move after the, the pandemic. But at the same time, 65% are craving for more in-person time with their teams. So this is actually something that you have to balance and it's not easy, okay? So there's a learning curve here that you have to understand. And what we are doing now, keep this in mind, this is not uh, remote work. What we are doing now is confined work from home. So it's not exactly what you're doing now, it's a different thing and it's flexible. But another interesting conclusion that, that we had and being most of us probably managers is that there's a, a um, a misalignment between what leaders are seeing and what employees are experiencing. Leaders are seeing actually 
at least the same or more productivity coming from their employees. So that's good. But at the same time, employees are saying that the blur between personal and professional life is becoming increasingly difficult. That in the cases where you are in your home, you face obstacles that you didn't look before. Things like uh, um, exhausted workforce, even despite the high productivity. And if you are a Generation Z, and if you are between 18 to 25, you'll be taking the heaviest burden because what you're happening is most of Generation Z are still single, are out of their parents' house in some cases. So the impact of not having a strong network of connections in the company, because you should be recent, is even higher. So how can you, building this new uh, ecosystem of things, touch this, shrinking networks? This is another topic. As we move to remote, the capability of building networks decreased. We are losing ELOs. We are losing the capability. And this is critical for innovation. But good things, authenticity. Most employees are saying they can be more authentic in these new models. And talent. Talent will be source whatever it is. If you, if you build this flexible hybrid models with remote work in place, talent will be a different battleground that we have to tackle. Last note that I wanted to give you. One is the, the, the transformation. There's a lot, of, a lot of sentences on these topics of, and this one is from our CEO, Satya Nadella. Two months of digital transformation, two years of digital transformation in two months. The problem with this sentence is that it, 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 it passes a, a, an idea that digital transformation is a project, and it isn't. It's not a project, it's a process. It will not stop after two months or three or four or five. It has to be built in your, in your organization to be a thing that you drive daily. And it will even increase. 80% of, of leaders interviewed by a survey of Boston Consulting Group said they intend to accelerate even further that digital transformation. And that's critical if you want to make sure you land it. A couple of more numbers just to close. 40 to 50% increase in agility, 20 to 30% increase in productivity, up to 60% stability with fewer IT errors and less rework, and an increase of 12 to 20% in performance. All of these come by digital transformation. All of these come by increasing and accelerating. The tough thing is, if you're not, if on, you're board, not on board, you are losing, you are losing all, this benefits, all this benefits. And if you lose, and if you all, you lose benefits, all this benefits, benefits you probably you're probably losing your, your business. Your business. Based, on, based on this, and this was a final note, I want to leave you with a very more an uh, aspirational and positive note of what we we feel that we can do together with our partners and with you. Thank you. There are many paths to the future. The status quo is not an option. So which do you choose? This is a tipping point. Don't get left behind. Imagine the immense potential of what tomorrow and the day after tomorrow will bring. At Microsoft Services, we have helped thousands of organizations like yours to become what they dream. Imagine new possibilities. Designing your business around your dreamers. Reshaping entire industries by turning ideas into micro-revolutions. Unlocking ingenuity and creating a culture of innovation driven by data and AI to deliver experiences your customers and employees will never forget. Our expertise is deep and our imagination boundless. Our thought leadership drives big ideas and innovative scenarios, democratizing technology to solve real problems and create new opportunities in business and society. With a global multidiscipline practice and partner ecosystem, we can accelerate your business together. The engine that drives innovation is simple. Dream it, do it. We're turning dreams into digital businesses. Are you ready to claim your future? This is, I leave you with my contacts. I mean, LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Back to you, Inês.
very much, Abel. Thank you very much, for Abel, opening our webinar. for opening our with webinar with valuable insights and numbers. Insights and numbers. Uh, without further ado, uh, without further I further will invite Duarte to Flip to join us and to take to take a dive with us into a more practical view of digital transformation. I'll pass on to you now. Welcome, Duarte. Welcome, Duarte. Thank you. Thank you, Ines. Uh, I just want to confirm that you are you are checking my my presentation. Everything yeah. is is accordingly. So thank you very much yeah. for this warm welcome. I would like to to greet first Abel and Miguel and obviously all the attendees that we have here. Um, and uh, today we will talk. Uh, I will talk a, a little bit about uh, having a practical view over over digital transformation. Um, and I hope that this sharing moment uh, can be valuable for for uh, each and every one of you. Um, we have no secrets, we have no uh, master recipe, but at least we can share some ideas, share some best practices in order to, to be sure that our organizations are closer to be successful in the digital transformation journey. So, of course, um, we will talk about, about uh, the digital transformation and I will try to focus a little bit. So, Abel set us the frame. And now I will try to go a little bit into detail about uh, some focus and, and some strategies um, to help uh, our organizations to, to be successful and uh, some, some points uh, that you need to address uh, when you start and along the journey to make sure that um, you uh, continue deliver, to deliver value to, to your organization. So first of all, I always like to start um, to, to share a little bit about context and, and I, 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 I always, always like, always like this, this, closer this closer introduction, introduction because it because is very important, very important to, to, state, to state that digital transformation is, is not only about digitization and digitalization. And even in, in Portuguese, it is very, very curious because for digitization and digitalization, we only have one term. Um, so it makes the difference even, even bigger. Um, and uh, digitization and digitalization uh, are focused on on moving from physical to digital world, digital transformation is much more than that. Obviously, that it will use these capabilities, it will use the advantage of having the information, having the data and the process into uh, a digital version, but it is much more than that. It is much more focused on uh, reinventing, rethinking, uh, creating new business processes, um, and of course, thinking, taking advantage of, of this digital era that we are living in. So I think that uh, we can all agree, uh, as Inej stated in the in the presentation, in the early presentation, that digital transformation is composed by three main pillars. So uh, people, processes and technology. Um, and of course, I will start by people uh, because it is it is the main actor and it is the, the key success factor uh, to make sure that um, the digital transformation can be successful because even though we are in the digital era, many people think that they will lose their jobs, they will need to requalify, and that is in, pack, in fact, um, some of it, it is true. But also, um, we've passed some um, industrial revolutions before that stated that some jobs will be lost, some other ones will be created, and um, the only difference or the major difference is that this, the pace of change is very high in this uh, new uh, era that we are living in. And so we need to be very focused on the people because we have right now four generations working together in our uh, organizations for the first time in history, okay? Um, and we need to make sure that we can bring people from the beginning of the process to make sure that they are engaged, that they are motivated, and they are focused on delivering value, which is the main purpose of every transformation. And this one is no, no different. Um, and we can say that uh, people are the main driver uh, of this of this process. So if if people are the driver, the processes are the highway. So the the processes are the the um, the path that will lead us to reach new levels of performance, new levels of efficiency, to rethink and revise the business processes, as Abel said. Um, and we need to uh, take advantage of of the opportunity um, to revise to analyze, to rethink the processes, because as Bill Gates once said, if we apply automation or if we apply new technologies to an inefficient process, that will only magnify its inefficiency. So we need to, uh, together with people, we need to um, start by analyzing the processes, using the technology that we have in place to try to revise, and not only 
use technology into inefficient processes. That is key. And last but not least, the technology. And uh, in this diagram, it is a purpose that technology is at the bottom because I believe that technology here is an enabler. So uh, digital transformation is no not about uh, deploying technology or implementing technology in our business processes, but most um, I, I would say that uh, we need we need to 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 view this as technology being the main enabler to rechange the processes and to make people more comfortable to running those and make it making it more efficient and uh, with the main target of delivering delivering value uh, to the organization. So just as a final note, uh, digital transformation is not about technology implementation. Of course, that we need to use and to lever uh, the technologies uh, that we have now, but it is much more about process and, and people than technology. To reinforce a little bit, because it is, it is crucial, um, as, as I was saying, that the more uh, technology we apply in our processes, in our organizations, uh, the bigger the touch points between people and technology. We know that some processes, as, as Abel was saying, for instance, the automated warehouses or um, chatbots or whatever, um, they will create fully automated processes. But we will increase the number of touch points uh, in which people will receive the, the, the information or the knowledge and then they, they will need to take the decision or they will need to be a middle step into several automated processes. So uh, we need to, to have in place uh, proper change management methodologies and tools in place. Uh, so that people are comfortable in their new roles. We need to give them training to make them comfortable to use the new technologies, the new processes in place, and they can be um, a main driver and not a roadblock into this into this uh, journey. Okay, so this is crucial to have people in our sides, and we cannot forget that people are our colleagues, they are our final customers, they are our, our suppliers, so uh, we need to um, see people in every part of the value chain. OK, but why um, digital transformation is so relevant and the biggest challenges that we face today that make it even more relevant? So first of all, um, we have technology in place. And as I said about the, the pace of change, we have more technology in place than ever. Um, just imagine that uh, the first iPhone I know that Abel is from Microsoft, but I will state an example from Apple. Uh, the first iPhone was launched in 2007. And from that moment on, right now, we can manage our businesses, not only our, um, our personal lives, but our businesses using a smartphone. So the pace of change is immense. And we have now mature technology to implement and to uh, boost uh, the benefits that can bring uh, to our uh, organizations. Of course, the pandemics. Um, made us rethink about our priorities, the way that we work, the way that the value chains are, are built. So it is important to use um, this, uh, this reflection um, and to use the technology that we have right now um, available to rethink a little bit how to proceed, how to operate, and um, of course take some lessons back from, from uh, the pandemics that we are still living. Another important topic is that sustainability and the planet is not on the back of our, of our minds anymore. It is first priority, top priority, and we believe that um, together with the new technology, together with revising our prior priorities, uh, we can change a little bit the way that we operate, we can diminish the impact that our operations have, and to make sure that we can be sustainable, use less resources, be more efficient, and that is crucial for, for our planet and for, for the, the, the next generations. And last but not least, of course, the financials. The, the, the marketing and the market is, is changing um, very rapidly. We have new players coming um, and uh, the organizations need to present value to their uh, shareholders, stockholders, whatever. Um, and for that, uh, they need to, to concentrate on uh, being efficient and being relevant. So I would say that together with the sustainability, the sustainable finance is, is also um, a, key, a key aspect uh, to be um, on top of our minds uh, to start and to continue with the digital transformation journey. And I would end uh, this, this first introduction 
just just remembering a lesson from from the past that I like a lot, which is it doesn't matter if you are the strongest or if you are the most intelligent. Uh, according to the pace of change, the ones that will be most responsive and will find the way first will be the ones that will thrive. And of course, this will take some risk, but the organizations uh, need to be willing to take this risk, need uh, to envision uh, and to uh, put all the, the, the technologies, revise the processes, think about the people um, in order to find new ways to generate value and to be relevant in 10 or 15 years or even in five years. The market is changing very, very quickly. So now we will talk a bit about strategies, about some hints of uh, how to be successful and some frameworks that can allow our organization uh, to have at least a framework and um, to be prepared to, to, um, to uh, surf this, this, this wave of the digital transformation. So as, as I said, the process are, are, are key. Um, they are the aggregators of, of the activities that can create value for, for a company. So it is crucial uh, to start the digital transformation by analyzing the current processes. Okay, most, most of the organizations, most of the organizations should have the processes written down schematically. So you need to start by analyzing those. You need to identify the core activities because, as you know, sometimes you need you have support activities. Sometimes you have some other activities that cannot lead um, to value, but they need to be there to support the the core activities. So you need to analyze the process, assess the results, and then you need to identify the root causes of the bad performance or even the improvement opportunities. That is crucial that you uh, do this, this um, reflection and that you come out uh, with some opportunities to then um, rethink the business processes you have in place. Then, of course, it is, it is very important to benchmark against competitors, against peers, even within your company, because it can put your analyze into context and be realistic into the next step, which is the definition of a future vision and targets that you need to be assessed against with. And um, it, is, it is crucial to have benchmarks in place. Uh, you don't need uh, to hire uh, a specific uh, company, you can you can uh, use some some data that is available at least for you to have uh, a base of, of comparison. But after after um, identifying what 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 are the pain points, what are the improvement opportunities, and after setting a goal, how to start, where to start, how to start, how to prioritize. So I, I would say that you 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 need um, to uh, identify clearly. Um, some projects uh, that can lead you to success uh, in a shorter period of time. And for that matter, you need to take into account three uh, major topics. First of all, it is the tech, the technology readiness. So um, it is important as we are talking about business process transformation, we are not talking about specifically uh, innovation. Okay. So if you want to deliver value in a short time, or if you want to change in a short time, you need to make sure that you can uh, use technology that is, it is mature enough and it will be um, an enabler and not a road blocker. Okay? If you want to defy and if you want to innovate, then you can use technology that is on the edge or that is, it is still evolving. But if you want to grab some value from the beginning, I would say that you, you, you need to start from technology that it is already mature and that can deliver value in a robust way. Okay, so after defining this, you need to build the momentum. Okay, it is important to use several techniques to make sure that you can identify the quick wins um, and you can start by the ones that are less or imply less effort and um, can be impactful to your business so that you can have some uh, quick wins from the beginning. Uh, you, you, you build the momentum with that. Um, you build the trust of the board, of the colleagues, of the partners. So uh, it is very important to be clever uh, in the selection and, and um, start um, with the ones that uh, can give you access to quick benefits. And also um, the, the, the last point, uh, which is for me the, the most important one, are the quantifiable benefits, so the financial impact. I know that those are very difficult to perceive even when we are trying about 
uh, talking about uh, a new technology or when we are talking about transforming a, a business process, but those are key. Those are key to be our guidelines. Those are key to have the sponsorship from the board. And uh, we need to assess against something and uh, we need to live up to the expectation. So it is crucial. You, you don't need to be very ambitious, but you need to present some benefits. You need to, to assess against that against them and if you fail okay you fail fast you try to uh, gain some lessons and move forward to uh, the next project and the next iteration okay so just to sum up what what i've said i think it is it is crucial for us to take a, a picture and to define clearly what is our starting line okay so we define the SE situation we know where we are after that and after doing an analysis comparison with peers whatever uh, we can define and we can set a final goal. And of course, if we have a starting line and a finish line, then we need to, to plan our roadmap. Um, it will not be an easy road uh, to go, but uh, we need to define, or it is better if we can define some milestones, some quick wins, a journey to be incremental so that we can build trust we can breathe from time to time and say okay i can collect lessons from this project from this implementation how can i change to be success successful in the next milestone in the next quick win um, and after we gain success um, we need to quickly scale up uh, horizontally and vertically in, in our organization because we can have similar departments or sim similar business processes within the company that can be um, that can have a similar journey to to our to our own uh, so we can and we should uh, pass the message pass the words um, and make sure that the company can evolve not only our our process not only our journey but the company as a whole so whenever you grab something you you need to share share is a very important part of uh, any journey um, and uh, you can build trust and you can uh, improve um, your results if you try to scale up and if you try to mimic what were the key success factors for your implementation so i just i just want to to, to finalize this this uh, sharing moment um, with the key outcome, which is to be successful in, in a digital transformation journey, um, you need to think big. Organizations need to think big. They need to start small, uh, secure steps. You need to identify the value and try to grab it as soon as possible, but then scale fast. Because as long as, whenever you, whenever you, you have the first benefit, you want to grab the next one and the next one and the next one and that can build you uh, the momentum the momentum that i'm talking about and um, that can lead uh, to um, a lot of confidence and uh, it will make your journey easier and it will give you credit to fail because you'll need to fail it will happen but if you can um, grab some benefits along the way you will have some credit to fail and the company will continuously evolve. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Inesh. Thank you, Affinity. And I can pass the word back to you. Uh, thank you, Duarte. <laughs> thank you for bringing this concept into analysis and get a hands-on approach on what to prioritize and how to carry a digital transformation strategy to any field or business. And to get uh, even deeper into the subject, I will now invite Miguel Marques to join us and share his practical view over what tools can be our best allies while building a digital transformation strategy. Welcome, Miguel. Go ahead. I pass go ahead to you. Thank you, Ines. Thank you all. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Miguel. I'm Affinity Chief Technology Officer, and I'm here today to talk about digital transformation. The stakes are high after those two presentations. I hope I, I, I be on the same page also. And uh, uh, for me, digital transformation is such a buzzword that we use nowadays that can mean different things for different companies. It depends the level of the company, not the technology level of the company. For some companies, can be meaning implementing a new enterprise resource planner. For others, can be automate an existing business product process. More recently, we take advantage of AI 
and we use them to to get predictions and guide us uh, by identify patterns. So uh, in order to contribute and add value for this long talk topic, uh, I would like to give you a practical view, a, a real life example of the tool that you can apply on your projects to know if you are building the right tools for a digital transformation. So let's move on. Um, more important for us at Affinity than building the product right, the, the product right, is building the right project. And a, a common mistake I see uh, some companies do when they are facing the challenge that start a digital transformation, uh, starting improving a digital process, um, is that uh, they start with a list of requirements that normally they gather from different sources, can be stakeholders, users, and then they write the list of requirements and they, they send it to a, a new team project, okay? The new team project will start building it for weeks or months, and in the end, we all pray for the solution they build, fix the user's problem. But the reality is sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes you end up trying to sell a technical solution to fix a user's problem. And that's not ideal. And what I think about this from the experience I have in, in the years I work on some companies is that this approach is not ready for humans. It's not prepare, prepare for us because we are often wrong in our first idea our wonderful and well-planned project that we have in our minds, when we implement them, sometimes it fails. And the reason for that is that we lack user feedback. We build everything, we realize everything, and the common results of this is that customers don't see the added value in the end, or users don't understand how to use it, or even it's a different way to uh, different way to do it, but it's not a better one. So in Affinity, we had to think a different way to to know if you are building the right project and to do a digital transformation. And that's what I want to share with you today. It's a, a bit more practical. Uh, I we want to I want to share the version the, our version of product discovery. Uh, and it's a simple template, it's a five-day template that you can use and try on your next project. And the objective of this is to know before you write any code or you implement any technology, if you are building the right tools, okay? So let's move on. First of all, we need a focus group. Focus group normally has a product owner, uh, this is the person that will guide the meetings. You will have or you will need a developer. We call them the technical guy. Uh, this is there to avoid us to fantasize too much. You also need a designer, a functionalist, and we like to include a person, a personality that we call the out of context. You will be surprised uh, how good feedback sometimes you receive from someone that never experienced uh, the existing process or doesn't feel the pains that the, the user has. So, but uh, the, this is a trade-off, of course. The more people you will bring to these meetings, the better the shared knowledge you will have between them. And that's good because in the end, if you have a good idea, you want to implement it, and you want to have the shared knowledge between all members. But uh, the trade-off is it's more exp expensive uh, to bring everyone. In my opinion, this is not the part you want to cut costs. And if I needed to bring someone, I would bring my team, my team NASA. Those are the, the members. Also, uh, we cannot forget the users, the, the and not any user, the, the special users. We want the key users. Key users are the person you already know from your company. 
that uh, loves to share uh, ideas, likes to participate on brainstorm, is always there to give you feedback, and because it's it's really important that your digital transformation must be centralized on them, not on technology, neither on process. And to this focus group, we like to include a, a good ver variety of roles. Um, and the reason is to evade the blind spots. And we call, we call them the actors, the actors of the story. Those are a user's team. So uh, the template starts with the day one. On the day one is a meeting day. Uh, the dev team, the first team, has the more passive role on these first sessions, are there to interview the key users. We want, we want to know their story. We want to identify their problems. And we want them to be taking notes. And the first goal of the day one, we want to, to write on the board, if it's possible, the long-term goal. In a simple sentence, what we are trying to achieve. And also we want to write spread questions. Those typically are two to three questions. And for example, uh, does it make it faster? Is it more secure? Does it more external? Does it remove external dependencies? It all depends what you are building or aiming to build. But it's important to write those questions because you will be uh, answered those in the end of day five. Who are the actors? You all already select those. And at this day, we want to draw the existing story. The dev team uh, interview the users team and we write together how, how is the process we try to digital transform works. Here is, it's an example. Uh, on the left side, you have the members, the actors. You will, you will see the, the steps and you want at this point to identify the pains. The list of pains that uh, uh, are, are at this stage visible and everybody knows and we want to take care of that later. The last important topic of the day is uh, when we're talking about uh, um, a complex uh, business process that we want to improve, maybe there's more than one actor involved, but we, at each point we want to identify the main actor. Typically, the, the main actor is the person that uh, suffers more or complains more, but not always is like that. Moving into day two after we write the, the existing story, this is the part you, you get to digital transform. You re-engineer the story and you need to evolve everyone. You want to question the, the, the key users why they do such steps. If, they, if it's really important, you can suppress or not. And in this day also, you want to identify uh, fixes for the pains, not technical fixes, but uh, other process that can improve the overall process. Also, this day is important for you to ask the users how they visualize a, a user interface that you can apply to fix the problems. Moving on to day three. This is a work day for a dev team. And it's, it's, it's not for users. And what we want to do here is we start by sharing our views between the team members. That allows everyone to be on the same page. We do also brainstorm the interview notes and select what is important and what is not. And at this day, we start also to identify technical solutions for the times. This list of technical solutions are important because on day four, you will separate your dev team and you will be doing demos. We want to get inspired by others, by the best on the market. And you want to get the best ideas and brain, brainstorm them together. Uh, what we want to achieve here, what we aim to achieve is not starting from the bottom, but starting from a higher level. We don't want to invent the wheel. If the wheel is already invented, we want to take advantage of it. And I don't believe this is a bad thing. A lot of companies do this. 
Uh, I do think even the artists, when they, they want to be inspired, they don't go to a white empty room and sit there waiting for the great idea. So get inspired, see what is being done, uh, been doing in the world. Awesome, awesome. Um, also in this day, you want to build a prototype. Uh, the objective is the prototype is it's better for the user to interact with uh, something visible than just words. And uh, here, the product owner and the designer on this day, they, they can work on the low-fi prototype or a high-fi prototype. And we, we take the prototype to the day five. The day five is where you present the prototype for the key users. And here you don't want to interference with the experience of the prototype. We want to receive and we want to accomplish what we call the discovery testing. A discovery testing is where you answer the four important questions, the four great questions uh, that you want everyone to say yes, is will the user buy this or choose to use it? Can the user figure out how to use it? Can we build it? And does the solution work for our business? Those are great questions that you want to answer yes on this part. And uh, also this day end up with a reality check. Does the solution solve the sprint question? And does the solution accomplish the long-term goal? And here it is. This is really a, a simple five-day template that you can try it on your next project and it's important and it's uh, a lot of uh, projects would not move forward from this step and uh, if you, you 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 can see that we didn't even touch in technology so far and um, so if we move into uh, uh, the next step we want to develop the right tool right so uh, i want to talk about another different tool that is important uh, to, to digital transformer process. This, this is story mapping. Uh, we, this is an example of uh, a story. We use story mapping with the team NASA. The team NASA built the, our product QWork that you can later see on the website. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, and I can explain a, a little bit about what is story mapping, Story mapping is uh, um, a big picture, a helicopter view of a story. You can tell the story to anyone from the left to the right. The orange post-its are, are steps, steps of the, the actors. The purple ones are epics, are groups of steps. And the yellow ones are user story. And uh, uh, each step is split by user story. The lines below are reference for releases and increments of value. And when you release something, you push the yellows post-its to the top. So as I said, this is a great tool. I recommend use it. It's easier to everyone to put everyone on the same page. Is easier to make changes, and remember, you will be wrong, so you need to make changes. Um, and my recommendation here is go wider in telling your stories, but not deep in details right at the beginning, because it's it's going to be easier for you to to change a small list of big topics than change a big list of small topics. So break the story as you need, and remember, you will be wrong. And uh, to, to evade uh, not, not working so efficiently, you want to increment value uh, by doing small releases. So we, you start with a minimal viable product. The key, the key sentence here is the quicker we find that we are wrong, the better, because the faster we adjust to the right direction. And to summarize all these small big changes that in the end makes a great change. You want to avoid uh, doing big releases. You want to start doing uh, small increments of value. You want to avoid waiting for the final feedback of the user. You want to 
to incorporate a continuous feedback loop from users. You want to uh, stop doing split and estimate every story. I already explained you is not efficient. You want to split as you go and build an assert, you move to assert and build. And with this methodology, you will end up building the right tool, reducing the development time, and most important for a digital transformation, you will be solving people's problem. And the bonus of that, in the end, if you did it right, you will receive great feedback from the users that those are the most important. And that's all I want to share for, with you today. I hope you like it and feel free to make any question. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. It was great hearing you and the construct a little, a little bit, bit of the how and get a better understanding of the process itself uh, on your team, but also applicable to, to different businesses and uh, companies. And now that all presentations are done, and even though we are a little bit on, on top of the, the hour, but let's move to some questions because we have some here in the chat. Uh, the first one is to Abel. And the question is, to what extent do you believe Portuguese leaders in 2021 have implemented the necessary digital transformation strategies in their businesses? It's, it's at, at, uh, first of all, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for the question. Um, it's, uh, there's no averages here. So you, you'll, find, you'll find that uh, some of them did the work, some didn't. Uh, we have... Um, of course, some that we we know of and we are very engaged with uh, due to size, but we have amazing stories from our partners also of companies that have been driving digital transformation. The the main thing uh, I would say, and getting back to my presentation, is is twofold. One is, first of all, you have to do now what you need after the pandemic. Okay, so the necessary uh, digital transformation strategies are a continuum that you start. You have to start now reimagining and will go uh, as part of your, your DNA as a company. So that, that's, that's the first one. The, the second is um, every company has a specific strategy. You cannot build a single strategy or digital transformation strategy. It, it goes to the point of unique potential, capabilities, and so forth. Um, but what my my biggest uh, doubt actually is not uh, if it was uh, implemented is what will happen when we feel comfortable. That's my biggest doubt. It's not what's happening now, um, because as always uh, we tend to uh, drift to comfort zones when we feel uh, the storm is past. So I'm I, I'm really curious of seeing how companies that actually embrace, for instance, digital channels, um, will operate when uh, physical is is uh, is again a possibility. So no uh, bullet uh, silver bullet answer, but uh, a very honest one. Thank you are well. Um, for this part of the Q&A, uh, I will invite also Miguel and Duarte at any point if you feel that you have any any put any any insight that you would like to share also at that um like i mean we can make this a little bit of a discussion if 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 it makes sense so i have a question now for miguel how did remote uh, remote work affect nasa's work as a team as a team is it difficult is it difficult or more difficult to distribute tasks nowadays or on the other hand is it now easier to go through every step of the process Right, um, we face the same problem as all the dev teams when we go to remote office. And I do believe that uh, our type of teams, like developer teams, had an easy task when they, they start working remotely. Because we already implemented before the COVID, we already implemented some tools that allow us to work remotely. We also had some some days that we, we, we had it remote today before COVID. So uh, to do that, it was really easy for us to start working remotely. 
I do know that you, if you saw the, the presentation, there was a board with post-its and mm -hmm. that part was challenging, but uh, for us it was also easy because there is already tools, online tools that can allow you to do story mapping and you can also uh, take photos of your existing story mapping and they will identify the post-its and translate for you like <laughs> doing the okay. OCR for you and and you can use it like this. So it was really easy. Uh, our our work daily it becomes the same. We start with a, a daily meeting now remotely. At that yeah. time it was a, a stand up meeting. So it was really easy. And the, the five template that I show you, you can do it. We also did it the last year on some on some uh, process we, we wanted to improve. I hope so I actually, go, going back to your presentation, which was about tools, mm -hmm. uh, do you think you ended up using new tools or using the same tools, but having to adapt? How do you, like tool-wise, how, how did you overcome the challenges that the distance put in your team and um, in, in terms of, of tools, I don't think I, I had it more than I had it before. Uh, the only exception is the story mapping tool uh, that we didn't have before, but we already use uh, tools to manage our work, to do our meetings, to document our process. Uh, everything that we work is on Azure Cloud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, yes, it, 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 we didn't change so much. Uh, a thing that changed um, for uh, new new clients that we had in Keywork is that they start using Keywork, and mm -hmm. Keywork is, a, is an awesome tool to to work this day because uh, we faced clients that didn't have um, a centralized project where they can interact and and to see and collaborate with different. Uh, personalities of the of the company on, on in recruitment and in CRM. So uh, a tool like QWork allows them to do this. Okay, I think we can go back to QWork in a in a little bit because I believe that may be interesting to some of the the viewers today. But I have a question here for Duarte that I believe it's it's good to answer now, which which is because it's a little bit of, of a broad as well question. So what challenges do you encounter in digital transformation projects while working in your short international projects. Uh, projects? That That is very, very uh, interesting. Uh, I, myself, I, I, I work in an international project, not in a near shore, uh, purely near shore concept, but, but it is very similar and I can fully understand um, the aim of, of the question and why it is so relevant because when you are in, in a context of uh, near shore outsourcing, it is difficult for you because you don't have the proximity. Uh, sometimes the context is a little bit different, the culture, um, the, the target of the company. Uh, and if you are far away, it is difficult. And even if you don't have the opportunity, for instance, to meet at least once in person with the client, with the project manager from um, from the client side, it will be very difficult for you to engage and to maintain a good relationship uh, that it is always uh, uh, key to, to, to deliver a, a project successfully. But I would say that um, as, as uh, a possible way um, to, to, to try to um, avoid and make sure that you are successful uh, is to be pragmatic. This is, this is the way it is. We now have uh, this this way of working. Even if we are uh, together, um, we can be we can be in the same room. We can be in the same digital room. So we need to be pragmatic. We need to try to read the signs, even when we are um, in a distance, and try to figure it out what the client needs, what are the the major outcomes that that uh, need to to come from the the, the process transformation, and set the clear goals and uh, keep faithful to them uh, so uh, i don't have i don't have any any magic tricks but uh, try to uh, be uh, as most uh, pragmatic as possible to try to um, to try to avoid miscommunication 
misunderstandings that sometimes this uh, way of working, remote way of working can, can lead. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, perfect. And I will address this question to you, but I would also like to hear Abel's view on it. Um, because, and I'll start with you because you, you touched this point in your presentation. Um, so do you believe the pandemic brought possibilities to reinvent businesses? For sure, for sure, uh, for sure. For sure. And, 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 and we are proving it. it. Uh, we are proving it with with these contexts. Um, we need more and more digital tools to support these new processes. As Abel was saying, um, even the, the 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 most the most um, prepared uh, uh, plans um, couldn't handle uh, this this breakthrough that we have that from March. Uh, we went from office based into home office based so um i think i think it is it is key to understand that uh, the technology will come it will uh, transform all the business process create new business models uh, as a service it will explode this context and uh, this way of working because everyone uh, now can see the difference and now can be much more prepared uh, not for a second wave, but to remain competitive because we are um, in the pandemics for, for a, a year now. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't know when it will come back to normal, if ever we'll come back to normal. So we need to, to take advantage and uh, clearly um, defy uh, the current business processes, business models and use the technology to, to innovate for sure. Yeah. I don't know well. So, uh, Inej, uh, let me pick a, a, a topic before, which I think is interesting, on, on digital mm -hmm. transformation, which is um, before the pandemic started, my conversations on digital transformation with customers and partners were around, if, if you, you do, do this, this, you'll increase revenue, you increase uh, customer service. It's things like usually related to expanding, growing, um, and then the pandemic hit. And then digital transformation became a source of survival. You need this to keep on working. You need this for your uh, employees continue to access your applications. So it changes it changed the way people looked at digital transformation. By itself, this uh, expanded the, the way we reinvent our business because it was not only looking at one side, but looking at the overall uh, business. Secondly, there was a couple of myths that we had uh, uh, for sure that were broken. Things like we cannot, we have to be in the same room to innovate, or it's impossible to deliver a project uh, if we are not all together in the same place. Okay, I started my my life as a consultant, so I I traveled a lot for a lot of years. Uh, every Monday, coming back every Thursday or Friday because it was not possible to deliver the project any other way, and it is, and it. Be it became apparent that it is, uh, and a lot of things that couldn't be done now are. So uh, uh, I think by itself, um, it's clear that the possibilities are there. Um, the way each company will take advantage of those possibilities, both on an internal view, a resilience view, or in a growth view, it's, it's up to them. And it's up to uh, whomever leads the company. Um, imagining that future and building the path to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. So do you believe that the work environment of the future, um, I mean, it will be different than now, for example, uh, some of the things that you touched uh, now in your speech was that, for example, the traveling, um, the, the big rooms of people, the, the, the importance of being there, um, so will offices as we knew uh, cease to exist? There's, 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 uh, there's already a couple of studies going on on, on that topic, and uh, I, I believe the Nordics are a bit more uh, advanced than us on. Mm -hmm. uh, I just saw uh, two companies in the Nordics, and and I'm I'm comparing it because some of the questions I have here in 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 Portugal. So in Portugal, what I'm getting now is maybe we can reduce the office space. Because people will be working flexible, so hot desking will come in and we don't need that much space and so forth. Um, I actually met two companies in the Nordics last week that are doing exactly the opposite. They are increasing their office space, which is interesting. Okay. So their basis for the topic is 
as people become more flexible and remote work becomes a norm, you need to have more attractive office spaces. They are fully developed to make people want to go to the office and leave to the office specific tasks that are tough to do remotely. So if, if you mm -hmm. look at what I said in the survey we did, the networks are shrinking. That endangers innovation. Um, people want to go flexible, but they want more in-person team connection. So, mm -hmm. so that makes you look at the office. Maybe you don't need extra space, but we, you need a different space. Okay. Uh, we change our office uh, every six years, okay, more or less. It now became four and probably will even incre increase further. We just bring everything down and build it again. Okay, We open it up uh, July 2019, the last remodeling we did. And it's now updated. You know? So probably we are now reassessing it, uh, and I'm talking about the Lisbon office because we did it all over the world, but uh, um, it's now updated again because it was built already with a remote purpose in place, but it was not this remote. And it was yeah. not disengagement. Um, so yes, for sure, offices will change. Not sure how. It depends, again, in a lot of stuff. Uh, it has a cultural effect on it also because uh, it, it goes to the points of uh, my people don't work if I'm not looking at them. And yeah. I hear this a lot. Okay. Uh, or uh, yes, it's true, but uh, as a Latin culture, we have to be in the same room, otherwise it won't it won't work. Okay whatever. Uh, each culture will drive the office that's more adapted to it, honestly. If, if I may, just, just to add something, uh, Abel, Abel is talking about a very important topic, which is like in, in the past four, four or five, or five years, years, the logic. logic was open spaces, allowing everybody to be agile, to select the, the, the desk, to be there, to have a phone booth for a quick call. And now maybe we need to rethink and, and and have only meeting rooms. Because if I want to work alone, I will work from home. If I want to be at the office, I will be with my team or with a client and I need to have the tools and the means for that. So maybe as Abel was saying, we need to, uh, <laughs> the construction companies will have an opportunity there <laughs> to start building a meeting rooms. I don't know. Yeah. Miguel, do you want to touch on this topic? Yeah, I, 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 I understand and I, I have the same opinion as uh, Dwarf and Abel. Uh, if I want to add something about it, uh, is that when NASA, when our team will team be moving, will be moving to the office, we we will think that the the best the best opportunities to be there is to do, for example, those brainstorms, because all of the tasks we can do remotely. And we, we don't we, we have tools nowadays to work by pair, by pair programming, sharing screens. We we don't need to be to be in touch with the with the, pub, with the people to to work. And uh, of course, this only works with a culture uh, where people uh, trust each other. If if that doesn't happen, it's not the problem of the the process. It's the problem of the people. Okay. True. Perfect. Thank you all. Um, I have a question that I, I believe it will be for Miguel. Uh, but tell me, Miguel, mm -hmm. <laughs> you also have Kanban boards. Do you use it or is it for a different purpose? Yes, in fact, uh, I don't know who asked the question, but it's someone <laughs> that knows we are using Kanban boards, I'm sure. Uh, yes, we use Kanban boards, not physically. Uh, we like also physical Kanban boards because the interaction of go uh, standing up is it's also good for your fitness. Standing up, going there, <laughs> pick your post-its and move to the, <laughs> the next column. Uh, it's it's great. It's it's an achievement. Okay, I I I put it this post it in done. It it can also be celebrated by others on the room, and that's the point that it's not so good. Now we do it on our uh, digital tools, uh, but yeah, we can uh, we are on uh, we are still using Kanban, but digital digital one, and. Okay. 
yeah, I don't feel I don't feel any difference uh, by doing this digital. Okay, great. Uh, I have a question. I I believe this is a question that uh, deserves kind of a new webinar. So let's just give like a, a just just touch on this subject, which is which about, is about security. security. Uh, because digital transformation and obviously remote working and people being everywhere kind of brings up this question. And uh, someone asked, how does Microsoft been ensuring the security uh, of company data and information during the remote work? <laughs> this is a, another webinar, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's another webinar. But uh, um, but honestly, it's, it's, it's all, all, only on us. Uh, so let's split between Microsoft itself and, and our Try customers. To and, the second and one. because it will it'll go to the first. Um, mm -hmm. For us, it was not actually new as uh, we already had a very remote structure in working, uh, but for many of our customers, it was. Okay? Um, not, only, not only the idea of uh, having a much wider perimeter of security to manage as people went home, uh, but the type of access also, you are not accessing, accessing in your corporate network, but through uh, public networks many times, um, and and that creates uh, um, new challenges, right? Um, but it goes beyond. It goes beyond also the type of devices you go to your mobile phone because you you are uh, a lot of times away, and in in many cases go to your personal computers. I just uh, not that long ago, uh, one of our public administration entities didn't have laptops, so people use their own uh, PCs at home. Okay, so it, it really impacts the, the perimeter. And then you have uh, accessing um, systems uh, because you have to access remotely to your databases and your applications and all of them are, a lot of them are not built that way. Um, so it adds an additional layer on security. And it goes beyond as, as uh, 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 sensing comes in and it will even increase further as the technology of connection improves also. So. Um, it's it's again it's an ongoing thing. Uh, we invest heavily on it, uh, not only directly but also with partners all over the world. The checkpoints, the forty nets, the fives, uh, F fives, and so forth. We work jointly with them, but even with our, I'd say, competitors, uh, we share a lot of information with them to make sure we are uh, as safe as we can as a whole. Um, we build also another another thing which is interesting. We mean uh, global alliance to a stop cyber warfare, a sort of a Geneva convention uh, to make sure that no one touches hospitals with ransomware and so forth. It's almost a war situation, uh, but uh, still a long path ahead of us. <laughs> okay. Yes, I believe so. Miguel, Duarte, or even Abel, if you would like uh, to add anything else, because I believe we are done with the questions now. Um, so if, do you want to add any anything else? No, I, I just want to thank you all to be to listen to us. Uh, I think this is was a great talk, uh, a great talk. different talk, uh, a great different talk. We came from the top to the bottom. We touched a lot of different things, and I hope you enjoyed. I'm here. Uh, thank you very much to you, all of you uh, that uh, um, were were in the in the call and for the the questions and. Uh, for affinity to uh, organize uh, the the webinar and to invite me to to speak. So just just a final message. Thank you once again for the invitation. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, Abel, for this sharing moment. It was it was very insightful. Uh, I think that it was very valuable for for your, our attendees as well. Uh, so it was a, it was a pleasure. And uh, please please written down your your questions for follow up if needed. You have the contacts mostly Miguel. Uh, so, uh, from Affinity side, we would uh, be glad um, to receive your 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 contacts and your further questions. Yes, perfect. Thank you all, Abel, uh, Duarte, and Miguel, for your valuable contributions. And as Miguel said, to go from broad to deep, really deep. We we tried this webinar to share really valuable information and applicable information to different businesses and fields. So you find this valuable for your reality. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, uh, as well as uh, Duarte said, please address this, them to us. Um, just go to affinity.pt and we will be in contact with you for any business queries or any feedback about this event. And uh, 
anything else, just make sure you follow us on your online platforms for any news and updates about us and our business. And um, I think that's it. Thank you very much for, for being present and for your participation and interaction today and wishing you all a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Technology is our nature. Affinity is our DNA. We develop strong, lasting relationships based on trust, efficiency and quality results. Every project is tailored to the needs of each client, ensuring its success and unquestionable added value. There is no limit to ambition. We want to do more and better each and every time. With our own software and highly skilled and motivated people, we start off and deliver solutions with agility, proficiency and affinity. We don't just do, we exceed. And human relations are the key to create great technology. We want to cut the distance, break borders and expand success today.